<laughs> Thank you. Um, the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. LaTurner. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. The Supreme Court decision in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health was a monumental one. It signifies a victory for pro-life Americans across this country, but most importantly, the innocent unborn. But make no mistake, the Dobbs ruling is not just a victory for the pro-life movement, but it's a victory for our Constitution and for the principle of federalism. If you want to have abortion laws in this country uh, to your liking, elect officials that agree with you and pass it in the legislative body in states throughout this country. That is the way to achieve it, but let's not pretend that the right to abortion existed in our Constitution in this country. And contrary to what some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle say, this decision in no way endangers life-saving medical care for pregnant mothers. In fact, Mississippi statute in question explicitly excludes procedures to treat ectopic pregnancies and miscarriages from the definition of abortion. And there are nearly identical exceptions in every state that has enacted pro-life laws. This protection of both unborn children and their mothers is what a consistent and compassionate ethic of life looks like. In my home state of Kansas, citizens will have the opportunity this August to vote for the Value Them Both constitutional amendment, which rightly reserves the right to pass laws regulating abortion to the people through their elected representatives. I'm a firm supporter of this change and hope that the momentum from the historic Dobbs decision compels Kansans to restore authority to citizens to decide abortion laws. I celebrate the impact of the Supreme Court's decision and its implication for the sanctity of human life, both for mothers and their unborn children. Ms. Hawley, thank you for being here today. In your opinion, why is the regulation of abortion better suited for state legislatures than the unelected Supreme Court or even us here in Congress? Well, the state legislatures uh, are very close to the people. Um, I think Justice Alito's opinion laid out that 55% of the voters in Mississippi are women. And so those voters in Mississippi now have a voice uh, and a vote. Uh, they are able to tackle these really difficult issues. Um, and we can allow women to express their opinions on this issue. There's been a lot of conversation among my colleagues on social media and by pro-abortion organizations that warn women that their government is tracking their activity across health apps and their search history on web browsers and will use that information to seek criminal penalties related to abortion. Do any of the road trigger laws include criminal enforcement mechanisms against women who seek abortions? No, they do not. What would you say to women who are scared they will face criminal penalties for miscarriages, pregnancy loss, or ectopic pregnancies? Because as you know, this is a real issue and real anxiety, uh, even among those that, uh, that consider themselves uh, pro-life but want exceptions. Um, there is a lot of fear mongering going on out there and I'd like you to address it. Absolutely. Well, as you mentioned, Congressman, every state's law has an exception for life of the mother. And this means that doctors and physicians will be able to treat the mother uh, when her life's in danger. Similarly, the idea that treatment for an ectopic pregnancy is an abortion is simply false. That is scaremongering. It is untrue. Uh, it's a tragedy that actually one in 50 pregnancies are ectopic pregnancies. Women usually find out about this between six and eight weeks, and it's a horrible circumstance. But treatment for that is not an abortion. There's no intent to take the child's life. There's no reason to be worried, uh, either as a doctor and physician or especially as a woman. And what, and what do you think damage is caused by this fear mongering? So, so I think, you know, discovering you are pregnant, uh, whether it's something you've longed and hoped for uh, or something that's unexpected, uh, can be overwhelming. Um, and to have this additional fear-mongering on top of that, I think just adds uh, to that uncertainty of women. Uh, we need to come alongside women and support them. We need to provide them with the resources that are necessary for them and their children to survive. Uh, the Dobbs decision is not only a legal victory, but it is a rallying cry. We must become a culture that values life, that values women's lives and provides them with the resources they need throughout their pregnancy and beyond. And if I could get you to comment uh, on this, it was referenced earlier, the vandalism that is being done throughout this country and the intimidation that is being attempted. In my home state of Kansas, as I mentioned, the, it, we're, we're trying to pass value them both because mm -hmm. our state Supreme Court uh, uh, wrongly decided that our 1859 Constitution had a right to abortion in it. 
uh, which is absolutely absurd. But we're trying to right that, and we have instances in Kansas right now where churches are being vandalized. Would you comment on that briefly? Absolutely. Well, I think you're right that the Roe versus Wade decision not only misled the American people by imposing a, a constitutional right to abortion, but also state Supreme Court. So uh, hopefully Kansas can rectify that. Um, as far as the vandalism the, the, the uh, goes to... The time has expired. Thank you, Madam Chair. I yield back. The gentlewoman from...